G'day guys, Will Kitchen here. Welcome back to another video. Now, today we're going to be talking about a pretty special fish. One of the powerhouses of the estuaries and a bucket list fish for many anglers, the mangrove jack. So strap yourselves in and I'm going to do my best to teach you everything you need to know to go catch a mangrove jack. Now, I'm going to start off by saying I'm not sitting here pretending to be an expert, but it was once my dream of catching a mangrove jack and I never thought it would happen until I started fishing like this and used these tips and it made it so much easier and I've caught a fair few mangrove jack now actually. Holy moly. <laughs> so today we're gonna to talk about the gear, so rods, reels and tackle, uh, the best baits, rigs, and also the technique on how to catch them. So if you enjoy this video, um, at the end, I'll leave the link to some of my other mangrove jack videos where I'm actually catching these big fish. Uh, so I hope you can enjoy those too. We'll get into the video. Alrighty guys, we'll start off with a quick and easy one, the gear you're going to need. Now, contrary to popular belief, you do not need anything expensive for this. I see people using ridiculously expensive setups to go catch these fish when really, you don't need much. So this is mainly what I would use. So the rod, we have a Shakespeare ugly stick, six to 10 kilo rod. I can't remember how much this costs. I got it when I was 12 years old. The reel matched up with it, cost $20. It's a Shimano IX4000R, but it's smooth as and has really good drag. This setup, um, I catch fish like big snapper and even Spanish mackerel on this. So I'll show you some of those fish. It's caught fish like this before. Had some big runs to try and get me back down. There's another one. Got him? Yeah. Mm. Woohoo! What a cracking fish, Matt. Well done. Absolutely beauty. It's really tough and hardy, but it's also perfect for the mangrove jack. I use 20 pound braid and 20 pound leader. You can go heavier like 30 pound, um, but I've caught you know, big fish on this as well. So I'm gonna stick with that for now. If I'm getting busted off a lot, I might have to, to up it to 30 pound. The other thing is the leader. I'd say fluorocarbon is the best just because it's good with abrasion. It doesn't break as easy as mono. Alrighty, now moving on to the hooks. There's a couple of different options. So you can use your normal standard J hooks or your circle hooks. I'll elaborate on all of this when talking about rigs, but I use these mustard hoodlums in the 4 uh, They're the right size. They're small enough to, to fit in the jack's mouths, but they are so strong, they're never gonna break. Mangrove jack won't break these. They are tough as and sharp. There's those ones, hopefully you can see. The other thing you can use are circle hooks. So mustard circle hooks are good. Once again, 4-0 will do fine. If you're looking to catch and release, circle hooks would probably be the better option. The J hooks can gut hook them a fair, fair bit, so the circle hooks usually hook them in the corner of the mouth. But if you're looking to keep a fish, I'd go with these, I prefer these. All right, moving on, we'll talk about the bait. So what I've found is liveys are by far the best bait. Fishing it side by side with dead baits, they love liveys. Now, the type of fish you want to be using as bait, i found winter whiting are absolutely dynamite. They are the best bait if you can get them. And it doesn't matter how big or small they are. Small ones are jelly beans for them. The bigger ones, they'll still bite and, and swallow in the end as well. The next best thing would probably be mullet. Once again, doesn't really matter what size. Small ones to sort of, you know, your medium ones are good and then things like herring and your silver bitties are good. But I found that they die quite quickly on the hook. You have to use a really thin gauge hook. The other reason winter whiting and, and mullet are so good is because they survive a long time on the hook. You can put them out there for hours even and uh, they'll survive. Whereas the herring, as soon as you put a hook through them, they tend to die sometimes. But yeah, the winter whiting, they'll kick on for ages with the hooks in them, they don't mind. Now, dead baits do work too. But the thing is, other fish like brim, um, eels, all that sort of stuff that live in around the snags are uh, going to annoy you and pick those baits to pieces sometimes. So that's a downside of that. 
you want to sort of leave your baits in there and let them sit, wait for the jack to come and hit it. If you're using dead baits, once again the winter whiting and mullet are good if you take a fillet off the side of those. You can also use, you know, tuna strips, pillies, even sort of your larger squid. But yeah, I think your best bet is to try and get some liveies. We don't actually have a live bait tank in the boat, so we take a bucket and you, you can buy aerators from BCF and places like that that you put batteries in, it has a tube going into the water and it aerates the water, keeps them alive. So you can use that land based as well. All right, moving on, I'll get onto the rigs. So the best way I've found to catch them, especially with these mustard hoodlums, is to snell two hooks together. Now, it depends on the size of your bait. This is really good for the bigger baits. Sometimes I'll even have both hooks down in them, but sometimes they might just get pinned by the back one. I'll show you a quick clip here uh, of me explaining the rig one time when I was out jack fishing. So all it is simple as sinker onto a swivel, 20 pound braid and then a 20 pound leader to some mustard hoodlums snelled. So it's pretty much just the snell, um, you know, a length of leader, then just a swivel and a sinker. With the smaller baits, you can also just use a single hook or as I said before, if you're using a circle hook, just use a single circle hook. I'll quickly show you how to hook your baits on to the, to the rigs. So I've got a printout of a little winter whiting here. It's probably a bit small, that'd be fine for jacks. But uh, yeah. So there's a couple of different ways you can do it. So the first option is, with the snell rig, you can put one hook up through the top lip, as so. And then the other hook, you want to bring it around and up, sort of, not too close to the head, but further down the back here, towards the tail, you want to pin another one through. So it'll be sitting a bit like that. Hopefully you can see that all right. So yeah, that'll be a good rig for the bigger ones. But with a fish this size, that's the perfect size to use a single hook with. So I'll show you that now quickly too. Alrighty. So if we're using a single hook or a circle hook, the best way to pin it would probably be just through the shoulder about here, you know, between the head and that, that fin. So that'll be hanging there like that. Hopefully you can see. You could also hook it straight up through the top of the nose, but I find it just holds the hook really well, really strong in there um, through the shoulder. And if the jack hits it, the hook won't just rip out like that, which it can do on the nose. The other thing you can do is use those exact same rigs, uh, but rather than using a swivel and a sinker, you can just tie straight braid to leader, have a length of fluorocarbon, and float it out unweighted, or even under a float if you want, along a snag. I've seen a lot of guys catch fish like that too. Here's the thing you probably mainly click this video for, and it's a technique of how to catch them. So you've got your gear sorted out, you've got your rigs, you know how to set it up, but now what do you do with all that? Well, obviously Mangrove Jack loves structure, it's in their name. During the day when the sun's up, they're usually very tight to that structure or up under caves somewhere or right deep in a snag. In low light or at night, they tend to venture out and feed a little bit more freely away from the snags. So a big tip I can give you is, if you can, fish for them at night. That's when I usually fish for them and that's when I've had my success. The technique, in theory, is pretty simple. It's all about putting your bait in the right place, then you've just got to wait for the bite, and the hardest part is actually trying to pull them away from the snag and land them. So when you're looking for a, a snag to fish, you want to look for somewhere where there's a little bit of current pushing up against it that'll push bait into there. So that could be a, a tree or a, or a snag that's fallen into the river, or it could be rock walls, bridge pylons, things like that. That really hard structure is always a good one, you know, really big, bouldery, rock walls, things like that. So what you want to do is, you want to get your bait as close to that snag as you can without actually being snagged. So for example, you want to try and sink it down right next to a tree, right on the edge of it, or right where a rock wall meets the sand on the bottom. You want it right on the edge there, so you're not snagged, uh, but a jack is going to be very close and be able to come and get it. Now. It's very tough to do this while drifting, so it's best to anchor out from the snag or alongside it and then cast your bait and let it sit there right in the zone. 
Same with land-based, I guess. The good thing about anchoring back from a snag and fishing onto it is when you hook the fish, you're gonna be able to pull the fish away from the snag straight away rather than give them an angle to get you back in there. Now, mangrove jack are extremely aggressive and extremely hard fighters. When they attack their prey, they'll come out of the snag and as they grab it, they'll already be heading back into the snag. It happens so quickly. So you've got to be ready to strike as soon as you, as soon as they take the bait, to strike and try and turn their head and pull them out. Now, sometimes they'll absolutely just suck the bait in, engulf it and take off. Other times they'll bite a bit and it's a very distinct bite. It's a sort of, you know, the rod tip really whacks down um, a few times before they take off. So just let them bite it, let them eat it and then you'll know when the rod loads up because they don't hold back. So yeah, sometimes they'll swallow it whole, sometimes they'll bite it. Just wait for that rod to load up and then go hell for leather. Now in saying this, no matter what you do sometimes, you can't stop them. No matter what you do, they are going for that snag and they're not stopping. So expect to be busted off, don't be disheartened. It is frustrating, I know, but it's mangrove jack fishing, it's just part of it. You know, it's kind of what makes it fun, that initial run and hit when they're trying to get you back in the snag. A lot of you will know this, but some people may not. They like the warmer months, so when it's coming into spring, um, all the way around to you know early autumn, that's when they really start to bite and you'll catch a lot more, and they're a lot more aggressive. The really warm, muggy, humid nights, that's, that's prime. That's when you know you're a good chance of them feeding and being really aggressive and fired up. Another thing that I'll add is, don't be discouraged if you don't succeed straight away. I was kind of lucky that I tried a spot and it actually paid off, there were jacks there. But if not, keep trying different snags and different spots because eventually you'll find one. They are there and they're in places that you're not expecting as well. Most pieces of structure will hold jacks at some stage. Persistence pays, you'll eventually hook one and land one. Alrighty guys, a final thing that I'll add is they aren't as plentiful in some areas as your fish like brim and whiting and they also grow slowly. So just be aware of that. If you are keeping some for a feed, try not to smash the same area over and over again. It's a good excuse to go try some new areas and some new snags. I'm definitely not saying that you shouldn't take some for a feed, but yeah, just be aware guys, because as I said, I think spots can easily be fished out. There may not be a lot of mangrove jacks in an area. The whole area can, can change. Anyway guys, that's it from me. I really hope this helps you. As I said, I'm not an expert, but these are the tips that helped me start landing mangrove jack, and this is all I do. I keep it simple, and it really works, and it's, it's quite a lot easier than I thought it would be. So good luck, tight lines. If you think this video will help someone you know, share it with them, share it on Facebook, share it with your mates, you know, check out my other videos. I really just try to help other fishers out and get them onto some fish. I make vlogs as well on my fishing trips, so hit that subscribe button if you think you'll enjoy. I'll leave a link to my other Mangrove Jack videos if you'd enjoy that. Don't be afraid to comment as well and, and say good day. But yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.